push through to a miracle. Push through to a miracle. Look with us in Mark chapter 5, verses 25 through 34. Very familiar passage of scripture. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years, and she had suffered many things and many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself, that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him, and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith had made thee hope. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. Now to kind of put this in context, Jesus has just delivered a demoniac man. He gets in a ship to go to the compass. After he has passed to the other side, Many people gathered in him. At this time, one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, came to Jesus and entreated him to come and heal his daughter. As Jesus was going to heal this daughter, the miracle in the passage before us happened. Know this. Jesus knows when he has been touched. And you will know when you have touched Jesus. In the moment we'll observe the miracle of the healing of the woman with an issue of blood as an example of how we are to push through to a miracle. You see, a miracle is out beyond the natural. It's when your wisdom is used up. When your knowledge is used up. When your physical strength is used up. When your emotional and your mental reserves are used up. That's when God can do a miracle. Let's look at the condition of this woman. She had a certain issue of blood for 12 years. Now according to the law, she was unclean. According to the law, she was to be separated from everybody, including family members. According to the law, she could not go to temple. She was ostracized. Can you imagine that? Do you remember how it felt during COVID and you were shut up in your houses and you weren't allowed to go out and see people. You couldn't socialize. You couldn't go to church. Do you realize how that felt? Now think about that for 12 years. 12 years not being able to go to temple worship. I got antsy when they kept us out two weeks. I think I'd go start raving mad if I had spent several years out of the church. When she went out, she was declared to the community so they were not in contact with her. I am unclean. Imagine that. And when you went out to the marketplace to get water, you had to announce to everybody, I'm unclean, don't come near me. 
Because if you touch me, you'll be unclean. Now that's a sad situation. But it gets worse. In addition to be socially bankrupt, religiously bankrupt, financially bankrupt, physically, emotionally, and mentally bankrupt, she was at the end of her world and her hope. Oh, but she heard Jesus. She heard Jesus. Amen. You see, the Bible says this woman had spent all her living and was no better. She had gone to the physician 12 years and had not got any but she heard of Jesus. <laughs> Friend, what greater words can you hear this morning than to hear of Jesus? Amen. Amen. Because she heard this was a man who cleansed the leper. This was a man that opened blinded eyes. This was a man that opened deafened ears. This was a man that caused the dumb to speak. And this was a man that raised people from the dead. Mm. What a word of faith that God brought to this needy woman. Now, let me remind you, any time in the gospel you hear the term a certain man or a certain woman, it is speaking about a Jew. This was a Jewish woman and these things were happening to her. She heard of Jesus and then she determined to go to Jesus. She wasn't going to let anything stand in her way. Her focus was on Jesus. Her focus was not on the temple. Her focus was not on the Torah. Her focus was on Jesus whom she had. You know sometimes when we don't get miracles, we get distracted. We get headed towards our miracle. We're trusting, believing, but an obstacle shows up. And knocks a little bit of the wind out of us. This woman was determined nothing was going to stand in her way to get to Jesus. Amen. Now she knew she was unclean. She also knew she was a woman. And in that culture, women did not go out by themselves. They had to have a male escort. A woman went out by herself. She was considered a prostitute. So she had cultural issues to deal with. She knew the law said she was unclean. And anybody she touched would be unclean. So she had to wrestle with that. Is it worth my miracle to make that person unclean? Then she had an obstacle of a bunch of people. Have you ever been to a place where people were shoulder to shoulder and you wanted to get in front of them and you tried and you tried and you tried but they were so pushed together it was difficult to do. This is what this woman faced. I believe when she made the statement if I may but touch his clothes I shall be whole she wasn't going to let anything stop. She wasn't going to let the devil. She wasn't going to let the soldiers at the temple. She wasn't going to let the crowd. And she wasn't going to let any doubt or fear stop her from getting to Jesus. I could just see her there. Remember, she just wanted to touch his clothes. She wasn't thinking about touching him around the shoulder or the head. Why? 
because she knew to get to him, she was going to have to humble herself and crawl on her hands and knees to get to Jesus. Pride would not stop her. She humbled herself. She got on her knees. She got on her hands, and I believe she crawled through the legs of those people. With all the strength that she had left, she had to reach Jesus. Amen. Folks, sometimes in order to get your miracle, you have to push it with all the strength you've got. Amen. She pushed forward. Guess what? She got to the hem of the dark. Oh, glory. She reached her objective because nothing was going to stop this woman. You think about it. What if you had an issue of blood for 12 years? For 12 years, you've been ostracized. For 12 years, you couldn't go to church. For 12 years, you had to walk outside the house and say, I'm unclean. She was tired of it. She was tired of all she was having to go through. And folks, that's when a miracle comes. When you get tired of it all. You get tired of the weakness. You get tired of feeling bad. You get tired of the mental oppression. You get tired. Jesus says, Come on, me. Are you the neighbor and heavy laden? And I will give you rest. Amen. Wonderful, isn't it? Amen. That He will take us at our weakest. And in our weakness is His strength made perfect. Amen. Amen. Have you ever felt that sense? When you felt so weak, suddenly there came a power from heaven and touched you from the top of the head to the soles of the feet mm -hmm. and made your backbone straighten up. Mm -hmm. Here's this lady. She touched him. Now here's the interesting part. All the people all around. And Jesus said, Who? Touched me. These old big disciples they look around. Lord, you see this crowd? How can you ask? But you see, the woman knew what had taken place in her body. Because the moment she touched him, the staunch of blood stopped. And she was immediately made home. But one thing Jesus knew, for her to keep her miracle, she must make a confession. She must let people know what God had done. And so when Jesus looked round about to see her, the woman calls out to Jesus. And she tells him of her miracle. She says, then she falls down and worships him. Oh, glory. Have you ever been moved to that place in your spiritual life that all you can do is fall down and worship him? Yes. You're so full of thankfulness and gratitude, all you can do is fall down and worship him. And I love the words of my Lord. Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy faith. What wonderful words to hear after 12 years. Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go and be whole of your play. Go in peace. Isn't it wonderful 
that when Jesus does a job on you, peace is what comes next. He fills your mind with peace so there can be no doubts. He fills your heart with joy so you can have strength. Think about this. We, like this woman, must overcome every obstacle on our way to our miracle. We must ignore the crowds and the naysayers. Act by faith on what we have heard of Jesus. We must determine in our own mind and faith to reach out to Jesus and let nothing stop. One thing is for sure. Jesus will know when we touch Him. And we will know when we have been touched by Him. It's our time, church, to reach out to Jesus, push through, and receive Him. Brothers coming?